Seton is going through many different changes, none bigger than the restructure plan that is combining multiple colleges across the university to the dismay of many students and some faculty as well. To help us make sense of it all, we talked to SGA president and provost and a whole bunch of students here on Seton Hall campuses for Pirate TV and WSU News. I guess recently I've learned that um, they're collapsing a bunch of these different schools into like just like one like centralized kind of school or at least, at least like a few of them. Um, Sounds kind of weird. I don't understand exactly what the benefits of doing that would be for the students or if maybe there's a benefit for like, I don't know, like the business end of the school, like like them making money or whatever. Um, I don't know. It doesn't sound good for the students. It sounds like, you know, they're just being lumped into like um, a group. And I think the different schools that they have now um, provide some like specialization in the field that they want to go into. Uh, yeah, so some of these restructuring changes are kind of bewildering to me. I don't see what the College of Education and Communication Arts really have to do with each other. I don't see why they would need to be together in the same school when they've, they've been operating fine on their own. Um, and moreover, I worry that this will lead to a situation where you have these two schools combined and that leads to like resources being like leads them having to like compete for resources with one another. I feel like most students felt blindsided by this, especially you know in the schools that are actually being affected by it, because we weren't represented, we weren't really involved in that decision-making process. And beyond that, I don't see, I mean beyond just the necessity of merging these schools, I don't even know if it's the right position. There's been a lack of communication um, with the student body about this. You know, we not only did we not really have like significant input, but we didn't have significant like knowledge of it like beforehand you know it was, this was just kind of sprung on us in an email one day um, I don't really think that's fair I I personally am not affected by it because I am a business student but I have a bunch of friends who are in the comm arts and uh, education program and they're really not happy about it because it's 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 just like uh, they they signed up for one thing they signed up to be in the school of uh, comm arts or they signed up to be in the education school so for them to have their diploma say something completely different from what they signed up for is really disappointing to them and I feel a lot I feel really bad for them especially because a lot like a lot of the programs like education and calm arts sometimes don't overlap a lot so it doesn't like restructurally it doesn't make sense to me with there being very little overlap uh, with curriculum why there would be like two two schools in one two very different schools in one I think the problem is the yeah, school kind of treats colleges like a business when it should be treating them as like uh, schools because it is a college, right? So maybe, maybe they should stop focusing on the money and maybe focus on, uh, I don't know, like resources and how it benefits the students instead of like how you know, it benefits like the, uh, the funds the college has or something. I think there's certain ways they can uh, kind of collaborate and get together, like you know, share resources, share programs and stuff. So that could work out. I guess we just got to like, see what actually happens. To better explain the changes coming with the restructure plan and the process of which it came to be, WSU's news director, Veronica Gale, sat down with Seton Hall's provost and other high-ranking faculty members. What are the benefits of merging these two colleges? I think the quick answer is it's uh, the opportunities that um, combining these two colleges present. It's what's most exciting to me. Um, we have an incredible college of education, incredible college of communication and the arts, and together they can focus on education and communication for human development. And so that to me is a very, very uh, open um, area of, uh, of really connecting and working together to identify new programs. One of the things that comes to mind for me is the opportunity to be able to build and create and collaborate. And I think when you start looking at opportunities of benefit to mergers, you get to have an infused kind of thinking about new problem solving, the ways you look at disciplines, the way in which you can now partner or co-partner in building perhaps something that can better prepare students for what their tomorrows will be. And so when we start thinking about concepts of merging, the words I often think about is what a tremendous opportunity to collaborate, to be able to coordinate, to be able to communicate more effectively, to be able to bridge to students, to help and learn more what students are interested in, and then to help us move these two colleges to a new space and a new place that ultimately will benefit all of Seton Hall. When we bring together you know, these two units, 
we, we stand to be better for it. You know, we're in an opportunity to collaborate. We have these different opportunities to bring together um, unique disciplines that have in intrinsic relationships with each other and how we can further those and become more of a unique institution than we already are. And I want to underscore, I mentioned how those two areas unite around the human development, but they also have a medium of uh, empowerment, both areas, both communication and edu education focus on media, visual media, visual communication. Uh, and so there is also an opportunity also to leverage the technology and to that there is no education without leveraging media and emerging media and so is communication which is so much driven by social media so there are not only opportunity around programs and people but also around shared spaces and shared technology having students think about how to not only advocate for themselves but how we as an institution can help equip students with the skills and knowledge base to do that when I think about what is one of the most powerful things that we can do as students that is an equalizer of a field, it is the ability to be educated and the ability to communicate. I see this really being able to benefit students in the long run. I think us as students, we think about what is the plan, what does this change mean for our four years at Seton Hall? I think for the immediate future, this is going to be a very difficult change for us all to adjust with, but in the long term, will be very beneficial. For example, School of Diplomacy partnering with the law school. A lot of diplomacy students have aspirations to go to law school. If the college, if the diplomacy college and the law school are able to partner more, that ultimately benefits the diplomacy students if they're taking colleges at the law school, if they are participating in legal organizations. That's wonderful. In the interim, it makes it, the transition can be difficult. I think the doors that will be open to students and because of this new window in funding, for example, one thing I discussed with our provost um, is increasing the number of graduate programs within education and com arts that they're now able to invest in because of the college colleges combining. So how closely have you guys been working with faculty and students when deciding making this decision? What we did is we worked with a committee that was duly constituted following the faculty guide in preparing a proposal. The proposal one was it took months of analysis, data, research, market study, uh, you name it, we have to look at our competitors, uh, we, we had to look at so many different data sets, including also we did a very thorough analysis on how we, we expand resources at the university looking at the IPEDS data, the post-secondary education data set. Uh, when, when we looked at everybody, everybody came in the table and looked at possible synergies that were that made sense, but also create opportunities for innovation that were unique. They were not something that it's already done at, you know, 30 miles from here in New York City, but we tried to look at something that was really um, able to carry us in a differentiating space. And so those proposals, we looked at many different combinations with the committee, and when the proposal was at a level for the entire university to uh, be released for feedback, that's when we went and got feedback. And then we looked at all the feedback and modified the proposal. There were opportunities um, for feedback as part of that conceptual phase that the, the, the committee had put out its university level um, first draft of the report, specifically with students um, through the SGA town hall, um, et cetera. There was a standing opportunity to submit feedback through the website. Each of these units comes to this with a, a very uh, strong history, a mission, a vision, a values. Those items are not going away. Mm -hmm. Those are things that we're working to co-craft into what is a unified singular area that now encompasses a broader uh, collective. I find that some of the best way to address concerns people have is simply to have a conversation. And when people start to think about the potential and they start to see the opportunity, they're more likely to want to be a part of the opportunity. We're interested in what, you know, alums were thinking, what our current students were thinking, what each other is thinking. There is not a time that we are not, the folks you see on this call, that we are not reaching out to the other one going, okay, what do you think about this? How would this work? 
it's all done through communication and conversation. We're going to have two years to build this in the way that we want it to be the powerhouse that it needs to be. So we want to work together in building this. Uh, now, conceptually, we agree it's the way to go. The board has, has um, supported um, enthusiastically this move. Uh, and, and now we just have to make it happen. So I look forward to, to really working with the students and the faculty and the terrific leadership that you see here. What we want to do is really craft a unique way forward and we think we can. As part of my position as student government president, I serve on the ISC committee, which is the Implementation Steering Committee. I am the student representative. Myself, along with my executive board of SGA, we met with the provost, Dr. Passerini. We met with the vice president of student services and our advisor to go over in detail what the restructuring plan meant. And essentially when we had this conversation, my immediate response before it was released to the public, you know, once the information was released to me, was that I think that students at first are going to be very opposed to this. And they were. Students were very confused. They were very upset as to what this meant for them as students. I think that that's something I've noticed that is very common when the university has released any major changes is students' immediate response is, all right, well, what does this mean for me in my studies? What does this mean for you know, my graduation? Anything like that, what does this mean for me? And I think that once that was announced, students are very upset. My immediate response was then um, at our next implementation steering committee and when I met with the provost, I did address these concerns but more or less from the lens of communication. Because in our informal conversation with the provost, she highlighted a lot of things to me and SGA that weren't necessarily communicated in this larger email. Because of course the university has to use very specific and formal language. So when we're speaking more informally, I was able to get a lot of insights that I think that students would benefit from. Um, so I think that Ultimately, the concerns that were brought to students came back to me. I addressed it to the provost and we were able to include that because when the provost and the Seeds of Innovation Plan, when it was announced to the public, there is a period of time between its announcement to where feedback was welcomed. So this meant that the provost met with each of the colleges, met with the faculty senate, met with SGA, and met with different areas of the campus community to gather feedback and to decide whether or not these different colleges would endorse the plan, the Seeds of Innovation plan or not. So during that time was when myself and the provost worked together to make sure student concerns were addressed. How will different curriculums change now that they are in a new school? Well, a few things we do know about the College of Communication and the Arts and the College of Education and Human Services is that the students are exposed to faculty who genuinely care about them and are student-centered that's not going to change. You also have faculty experts who are well published and researched. That's not going to change. You also know that we have faculty that are invested in their disciplines to create programs for students. So as students are in their particular major or minor, those programs aren't going to change. Those programs will be intact in the sense that if you are an education major, if you are a journalism major, a public relations major, those programs are intact. No one is looking to create a situation that will prepare students for their futures. What we have opened the door for, though, is an opportunity to create incredibly new programs as well. You know, speaking from the communication and the arts perspective here, we encourage our students to pursue their passions. But I think similarly, College of Education and Human Services does the same. Our commonality is that we're looking for our students to pursue their passions and providing them ways to do that. I think, you know, just looking at it simplistically, right now we have one content area that's affiliated um, with College of Education and Human Services, and that's our music area. We can broaden that area to expand, you know, and make that footprint even more so by uniting and coming together. I think we can do that in a more seamless and integrated fashion. And, and that's just looking at what we have, you know, knowing that students and their curriculum they're pursuing now are not changing in the immediacy. They're, if they're in a certain program, despite coming together you know, as two units, that's the program they're in. So essentially with the concerns that were brought to me, a lot of them had to deal with, 
all right, well, what does this mean for my major? For example, for the education majors, does this mean I need to take uh, communication classes because now the colleges have combined? Does this mean that I'm going to lose, you know, my advisor, or my professor, you know, a lot of people that the students really rely on? You know, what does this mean for me? It was a lot of the student concerns that I got. And I think a lot of those concerns were able to be addressed simply by understanding the intricacies um, and idiosyncrasies of the plan. Because I think students heard a lot of what was in the Seeds of Innovation plan through other students, through news sources, and through their professors, not from actually reading through the plan itself or reading in depth the emails that the university put out regarding the Seeds of Innovation plan. It's a consolidation of resources and a reapportionment of funds so that there's more availability for communication and arts and education for funding opportunities. So no prof it, it's not downsizing. So you're not downsizing the departments. You're not downsizing professors. You're not downsizing the opportunities that students are going to have. If anything, this increases the opportunities that students can have.